So this is our last lecture in periodic table. <laughs> There's plenty more, don't worry. But this last lecture, we've got one little sprinkle to add to our unit, and that is how do we identify between elements when they're at standard temperature and pressure, STP, so when they're at STP, as we all know from table A, is the temperature of 273 degrees, or I should say Kelvin, no degrees, and then zero degrees Celsius, so at these temperatures, of course, they're equivalents, and at one atmosphere pressure, or uh, 760 Tor, if you've learned another course, or in our course, 101.3 kilo pascals. So we're under these conditions. Who are the solids? Who are the liquids? And who are the gases? That's what we're looking for here. So in our periodic table of elements, elements are listed as atoms, neutral, okay, they're all neutral, but some are solids, some are liquids, and some are gases. Well, for me, the easiest way to go is start with our gases. So what I'm going to do is I call this the LL rule. All right, now it's not really the L, but if you put an L on your forehead like you were a loser to, for someone to read, your L would be backwards, okay? So put the L on your head like the, you know, the loser, I guess, um, motif here, but it's the L would be backwards. So I'm looking at a backwards L. Now if I was to rotate my periodic table, uh, rotate it, I guess, clockwise, and so that this would be on the top, you'd see this. But let me show you. So if I take this right here, okay, and this is one part of my L, backwards L, I guess, and I make it go all the way down, there's my one L. And I call it the LL rule. We have a little one called Nopkel right here. So there's one L, and there's a little L. So there's kind of two backwards L's if you were to, again, rotate your periodic table if you look at it that way. And these represent all my gases. All right, so all elements or atoms, I should say, or, you know, compounds, depending if you want to think about it, we'll just say elements, not compounds. They're all elements listed. So all of these elements, okay, at standard temperature and standard pressure are in the gas phase. And now we kind of understand this because most nonmetals, as we've already learned from our properties, have low melting points and low boiling points. Well, why? Well, because most of them, if you think about it, are gases. So therefore, of course, they've already boiled before they got to these low temperatures. So their boiling points are going to be low. Now, what we have to understand is now our liquids. Who are my liquids? Now, the liquids are a little different, okay? Now this would be, let's say, uh, red. So our liquids represent bromide and mercury, okay? So those are our liquids. Now there's no really fancy way to know that, as there's nothing for me to tell you other than that these two elements are in the liquid phase at this temperature and this pressure. But I will say that this is a non-metallic liquid Bromine is a non-metallic liquid, whereas mercury, Hg, hydroguarine is a Latin name for quicksilver there, but this is a metallic liquid at STP. Now, who are my solids? Well, my solids, well, if you haven't figured this out, is everybody else, okay? They're most of the periodic table are solids. So with the exception of the gases and liquids, everything is a solid at STP, except for the ones that I have what? Colored out, all right? So my friends in chemistry, most of the periodic table are solids, except for the LL, backwards LL rule, the nophical here, and the big L on its side over here, all the noble gases, including radon here, is gases, including the hydrogen. That's our Waldo, our nonmetal. Okay, so some funny things pop out here. Again, we have the, the careful, this is the non-metallic uh, liquid, and this is the metallic liquid, but some kind of uh, funny things, but um, some things do pop out here. Number one, if you look at the halogens, okay, halogen is the group uh, 17 here. They have seven valence electrons. They're the most reactive nonmetals as you go up, obviously. If you look very carefully, you've got two gases, one liquid, and one solid, or you call acetine a solid too, if you want to go that route. Um, but we'll just leave with the iodine. So if you think about this, you have the only group, group 17 halogens, that has 
all three phases of matters. It has gases, liquids, and a solid. So it's the only group with all three phases of matter. All right. And other couple of things are kind of interesting. We start with bismuth right here. Bismuth is a metal. And as you go up the group, you become more, what, non-metallic. So eventually you become more like a non-metal, which has, what, lower melting points. And therefore, you become a gas. The opposite is also true. Start with nitrogen, which is a non-metal, low melting point, low boiling point, a gas at room temperature. And of course, as you go down, you become more metallic. And of course, you become a solid, a metal. Okay. So in any case, that's the last piece you have to know. Your solids and liquids and gases. Now, the, the, the thing here is that you have to be able to identify all right, some types of questions that do pop up regarding this uh, this this information so sometimes it's not going to say who's a liquid they'll hide that question in their vocabulary what I mean by that is they could say to you which of the following has the lowest melting point and they could give you a bunch of elements they could give you um, let's say gold they could give you magnesium they could give you silver and they could give you oxygen now, they'll give it to you in its diatomic form, right? It loves to bond with itself. And you say, well, how do I know which one has the lowest melting point? Well, silver is a solid. Magnesium is a solid. Silver is a solid. So because all three of these are solids, the, this one, of course, is a gas because it's in that nautical, that little L area. So therefore, gases have lower boiling points and melting points because they've already melted, already boiled. So that's how you'll see those questions. Now, of course, don't forget table S, okay, lists, okay, table S lists melting points and boiling points. Okay, so you could look them up and compare them if you want, but it's easier to know the phases. Now, I could have given you these three metals that are solids because of knowing the rules here, uh, and I could change this out for, let's say, mercury. So I could put HG here. And I can give you the same question, which of the following has the lowest melting point? Well, these are three solids, and as you see, mercury is one of the liquids. It's the liquid that used to always be in thermometers. It's kind of removed from thermometers now because it is toxic. But it's that silvery liquid metal maybe you've seen in the barometer. But in any case, mercury would be your answer because liquids have lower melting points than solids the reason why these guys are all solids is because they haven't melted yet now you could have looked in table s to see which one of the four be my host if you want to do that but the liquid will have the lower melting point okay and of course um, that is how these kind of questions are given to you so if they're asking for a melting point or phases of matter solid liquid gases you start with your gases, your LL rule, your backwards two L's. Here's the big L that runs to the top and to the side, and the nautical is a smaller L here, and these are all gases. You've got two liquids, bromide, mercury, the rests are solid. You get confused, table S can help you with melting and boiling points as well if they word something uh, funny. Don't forget, as I talked about previously, Hofbrinkles are those elements that love to bond with themselves. So this is the Hofbrinkles. And these guys love to bond with themselves. So sometimes you'll see these elements in their diatomic form. So if you hear diatomic, it just means they're bonded to themselves. The noble gases, as we've learned, are monoatomic. They don't bond with anything. They're going to hang out. Okay? So that's the last little piece of this unit. Yes.